China spent years building its AI future on NVIDIA GPUs, even after US export controls forced companies to settle for cut down China compliant chips like the H800, A800, and later the H20. But in 2025, China stopped settling. State media called the H20 unsafe, warning it could contain hidden back doors or compromised firmware. Regulators summoned NVIDIA executives for questioning, and reports suggested companies such as Alibaba and ByteDance were quietly told to cancel new GPU orders. In August 2025, DeepSeek signaled its next frontier model would be built to run on China's upcoming domestic AI silicon instead. This wasn't a negotiation tactic. This was China deciding that NVIDIA would no longer define its AI ceiling. And here's the part that made the world pause. China wasn't planning replacements. The replacements were already scaling. Because beating NVIDIA isn't about a single chip spec sheet. It means matching compute cores, memory density, chip-to-chip -chip bandwidth, interconnect fabrics, and the software ecosystem developers actually use. That's why this moment matters. Because today, Huawei, Alibaba, Baidu, and Cambricon aren't just offering alternatives. They're offering China's first real attempt at a fully domestic, vertically integrated AI hardware stack. Each company is betting on silicon for different reasons. Sanctions, cloud control, model cadence, or symbolic comeback. But together, they point to one conclusion. China is no longer catching up to NVIDIA. It's replacing it. So today, we're going to break down the exact chips from these companies that could finally break NVIDIA's decade-long AI hardware monopoly. Huawei was the first to fire the loudest shot. Under US sanctions, Huawei had no luxury of waiting for permission by high-end silicon. It had to build its own, faster than planned, and deploy it at a scale large enough for national infrastructure. The chip anchoring Huawei's momentum is the Ascend 910B, fabricated on a 7 nanometer DUV multi-patterning process without a UV lithography. Huawei officials compared it to Nvidia's A100, even claiming a 20% advantage in specific low-precision training loops in 2024. Independent ecosystem tests reveal a more realistic gap. The 910B uses the HBM 2E memory, a generation behind Nvidia's HBM 3 stack. It holds roughly one-third less active model state in memory than NVIDIA's H20 and transfers chip-to-chip -chip data around 40% slower. Still, the 910B became the chip Chinese AI labs had no alternative but to test with. Those tests mattered because they proved Huawei silicon maturity was viable enough to train LLMs at a commercial cadence if pooled into dense enough clusters. The company's latest answer is the 910C a dual chiplet design that fuses two N10Bs. In theory, it can approach the performance of NVIDIA's H100 chip, NVIDIA's flagship chip until 2024. Huawei showcased a 384 chip Atlas 900 A3 SuperPod cluster that reached roughly 300 pflops of compute, implying that each 910C can deliver just under 800 teraflops when performing calculations in the FP16 format. That's still shy of the H100's, roughly 2,000 teflops, but it's enough to train large-scale models if deployed at scale. In fact, Huawei has detailed how it used to send AI chips to train DeepSeek-like models. To address the performance gap at the single-chip level, Huawei is betting on rack-scale supercomputing clusters that pool thousands of chips together for massive gains in computing power. Building on its Atlas 900 A3 SuperPod, the company plans to launch the Atlas 950 SuperPod in 2026, linking 8,192 Ascend chips to deliver 8 exaflops of FP8 performance, backed by 1,152 terabytes of memory and 16.3 petabytes per second of interconnect bandwidth. The cluster will span a footprint longer than two full basketball courts. Looking further ahead, Huawei's Atlas 960 SuperPod is set to scale up to 15,488 Ascend chips. Hardware isn't Huawei's only play. Its MindSpore deep learning framework and lower-level CAN software are designed to lock customers into its ecosystem, offering a domestic alternative to PyTorch, a popular framework from Meta, and CUDA, NVIDIA's platform for programming GPUs, respectively. 
state-backed firms and U.S.-sanctioned companies like iFlyTech, 360, and SenseTime have already signed on as Huawei's clients. The Chinese tech giants ByteDance and Baidu also ordered small batches of chips for trial. Alibaba's motivations are different but equally strategic. Alibaba Cloud depends on reliable training and inference compute. If Alibaba rebuilds its own silicon competitive enough, its cloud roadmap stays under its own control, not NVIDIA's export ceiling. Alibaba's chip unit T-Head started quietly in 2018, focused on RISC-V server silicon. Its first AI inference chip, Hanghuang 800, built on 12 nanometer delivering 820 tops INT8 compute and processing 78,000 images per second, recommendation loops, and LLM inference stacks. It could access memory at 512 gigabytes per second and contain 78B transistors. But its next silicon reveal was bigger, the PPU chip. Alibaba's PPUs are pitched as a rival to NVIDIA's H20, with 96 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory in support of PCIe 5.0 for high-speed modular rack deployment. During a state-backed China Unicom data center segment, Alibaba's PPUs were shown running inside a 22,000-chip AI cluster. 16,000 of those chips were Alibaba Silicon. Reports also suggest that Alibaba used its chips to train LLMs with parameter stacks comparable to DeepSeq class compute footprints. This matters because matching NVIDIA's AI monopoly isn't just about specs, it's about adoption at cluster scale. Alibaba also upgraded its PanGU SuperNode server racks to 128 chips per rack, with liquid cooling keeping its silicon roadmap modular, scalable, and thermally shielded. Alibaba is betting that by building interference with silicon competitive enough to rival NVIDIA's compliant hardware, Alibaba Cloud stays the default compute rental ecosystem for companies that want to deploy models at scale. This isn't national pride alone. This is cloud survival. Alibaba is building silicon so Alibaba Cloud can keep renting compute to others without letting U.S. suppliers or export rules decide its compute ceiling. Then came Baidu. Baidu's chip story didn't start in 2023. It started in 2011, experimenting with FPGAs to accelerate search and advertising neural loops. That internal project evolved into Kunlun. Kunlun 1 arrived in 2018 on Samsung's 14 nanometer process, delivering 260 tops and 512 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. Kunlun 2 arrived in 2021, fabricated on 7 nanometer, delivering 256 tops INT8 compute and 128 T-flops FP16 using only 120 watts. For years, Baidu's chip cadence looked quiet but 2025 changed that perception entirely. At Baidu's developer conference, the company revealed a 30,000 chip cluster powered by Kunlun 3 P800 processors. Guosun Securities estimated each P800 reached 345 TFLOPS FP16, matching Huawei's 910B and Nvidia's A100 compute footprint. Its interconnect bandwidth reportedly approaches NVIDIA's H20. Baidu pitched the cluster as capable of training DeepSeek-like models with hundreds of billions of parameters. But Baidu didn't stop at cluster reveals. It trained its Kinfan VL multimodal model family, 3B, 8B, 70B parameter versions, all on Kunlun Silicon. Kunlun chips also secured orders worth over 1 billion yuan from China Mobile. This matters because matching NVIDIA isn't just about T-flops, it's about cadence, software adoption, and trust. Baidu also revealed a five-year roadmap promising a new chip product every year. M100 in 2026 optimized for inference, M300 in 2027 optimized for multimodal training and inference. Baidu hasn't released full parameters yet, but the direction is clear. Baidu is proving that China's AI compute stack has domestic alternatives capable of training large-scale multimodal models at commercial cadence. And cadence restores investor confidence. Baidu's stock surged 64% in 12 months, partly fueled by Kunlun's reveal. Baidu isn't just building chips to match NVIDIA. It's building chips to prove China can match chip cadence itself, because a country that matches chip cadence eventually matches chip leverage. 
Cambricon's story is China's most symbolically important comeback. Its roots stretch back to 2008, a brain-inspired ship research effort inside the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It spun out officially in 2016 and became Huawei's early partner, licensing designs for Kirin mobile MPUs. When Huawei pivoted to its own silicon, Cambricon had to expand into edge and cloud accelerators fast. Its valuation reached $2.5 billion by 2018, and it landed on Shanghai's star market in 2020. For years, it struggled. Revenues dipped. Investors pulled back. The company bled cash while Nvidia surged. But 2024 changed that. Cambricon returned to profitability, anchored by its MLU NPU line. The MLU290, built on 7 nanometer with 46B transistors, scaled to 1,000 chip clusters. The MLU370 reached 96 TFLOPs FP16, but the real turning point was the MLU590 in 2023. It delivered 345 TFLOPs FP16 with FP8 support, easing memory pressure and boosting cluster training efficiency. Report suggests it rivaled or even surpassed NVIDIA's H20 in certain inference or training scenarios. This chip didn't just mark a compute leap, it restored commercial confidence. Because a chip that can rival NVIDIA's compliant hardware while fixing memory bottlenecks with FP8 precision and scaling to clusters is no longer a domestic alternative, it's a compute contender others must respect. Now, all eyes are on the MLU 690. Industry chatter suggests it could approach NVIDIA's H100 compute density and FP8 refinements. If successful, it would shift Cambricon from domestic alternative to genuine frontier competitor. And that matters symbolically, because Cambricon proves something no benchmark slide can prove alone, that China's domestic chip path can be commercially profitable, scalable, and trusted if executed right. This brings us to the geopolitical tension under all of this. Washington wants chip restrictions to slow Beijing's AI momentum. Beijing wants compute independence to reduce strategic vulnerability, even if it means temporary hardware limitations. But if you watch the cadence of these reveals, one thing becomes clear. China didn't slow, it's rewired. Clusters measured in exaflops, Memory pools measured in terabytes per rack. Interconnect fabrics moving at petabytes per second. Complier stacks bundled to replace CUDA dependency. This isn't China catching up anymore. This is China rewriting the AI hardware map at scale the world didn't think was possible using DUV alone. The most shocking part? China's AI labs are no longer waiting for NVIDIA's best hardware. They're deploying silicon that can train deep seek class models at national cadence, cloud scale, and sanctioned independence. This pivot isn't about matching NVIDIA alone. It's about matching strategic vulnerability itself, because a country that matches chip cadence eventually breaks chip leverage. The real question is, will 2026 prove China can end NVIDIA's AI chip monopoly for good? Comment your take. And if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving tech and AI breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.